I'm a lawyer. I read the law. I read YouTube statements. And I'm going to tell you what they're not telling us about COPPA. Because behind all the hidden secrets and the spin is the simple and hard truth. And that is, as of January 1st, 2020, thousands of YouTube channels are gone. And creator, I hate to say this, but yours may be one of them. Let's hit this. I'm Ian Corzine, your social media lawyer. On this channel, I give you my thoughts and sometimes advice on all things social media. Today, we're talking about a story that involves four main characters. That is, there are kids out there who love YouTube. They love to watch fun shows on YouTube. There are creators out there who just want to give great programming to kids and earn a living at the same time. There is YouTube who also wants to offer a platform for kids to get entertainment. However, they also need to make money, so they have to sell ads. And then there is the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, the government agency whose sole job is to protect US citizens from unfair, fraudulent, and inappropriate practices in commerce. The relationship between these four groups of people imploded in April of 2018. We're gonna to get to that, but first you need some background. In 1998, the FTC adopted a new law called the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA. The purpose of this law was simple. They didn't want children who are defined as being under 13 years of age to be able to give their personal information away, their name, their address, their phone number, put it on the internet, and then be subject to potential bad people and predators. The law was straightforward. Online services and social media platforms could not collect kids' personal information without the express consent of their parents. In the next decade, it became clear that the biggest threat for information on the internet about children was not so much them actually typing in their name, their address, or their phone number, or their age. A lot of kids, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, didn't even know their own address. The biggest threat was actually web cookies. I'm sure you creators out there know what web cookies are, but just in case you don't, they're files that are sent by online services, social media platforms, and websites, and are stored on our personal computers that contain our personal information, our name, address, phone number, sometimes credit card information, but most importantly, our browsing history, the way we click, what we click on on the internet. We love web cookies because it makes our life more convenient. We don't need to enter in all our personal information each time we want to order cabbage from Amazon. The commerce sites and social media platforms love web cookies because that way they can get our personal information, they can understand what our age is, our finances are, where we live, and therefore create targeted, personalized ads to us and statistics show that personalized ads online sell more product. In the 2000s, the FTC found that most websites and social media platforms were complying with COPPA. They were not collecting names and addresses and phone numbers. However, they also saw that most websites were accessing cookies made by kids under 13 years of age. The FTC wanted to stop that. So in 2013, they amended the definition of kids' personal information to include web cookies, or what us lawyers term persistent web identifiers. Now, the law was, after 2013, social media platforms, commerce sites, websites could not access the web cookies made by children under the age of 13 without parental consent. Also at this time, in about 2013, kids' content on YouTube and other social media platforms was blowing up. More and more creators were joining on and creating kids' content as a means to earn a living. YouTube basically took a hands-off approach during this period, and they continued to collect ad revenue. If they were ever approached about the 2013 amendment to COPPA, they said, listen, it's not applicable to us because YouTube is for kids 13 and over. The FTC seemed to buy it because for six years or so, they did not enforce the 2013 amendment on YouTube. But in the next few years, 
the statistics showed that kids continued to use YouTube and other social media platforms as their main entertainment source. I guess in 2016, 73% of kids eight to 11 were using YouTube regularly on a weekly basis. For 12 year olds, over 87% were watching YouTube for many hours per week. And then the implosion happened. In April of 2018, 20 child advocacy groups filed a complaint in the SEC against YouTube. They complained that YouTube was lying when it said that the platform was for kids 13 years and older. They argue that there were millions upon millions of example of content on YouTube that was geared directly to kids that were younger than 13 years of age. In fact, they even said that YouTube's algorithm was specifically programmed to funnel kids content and bring in kids younger than 13 years of age on the platform. The advocacy group said that this was a blatant violation of the FTC's 2013 amendment and therefore YouTube should be barred from having kids content on the platform. Facing big political pressure from these advocacy groups, as well as possibly the executive administration, the FTC filed a civil complaint against YouTube. It alleged that YouTube violated the 2013 amendment and that YouTube owed it $42,530 per violation of this amendment and that YouTube should be forever barred from marketing to children who are under the age of 13 years old. YouTube settled this civil complaint in 2019 and forever changed the platform and creator and viewers experience on the platform. As a part of the settlement, YouTube agreed to pay a $170 million fine and to stop providing kids content on the platform and a lot of other changes to the platform that we'll get to in a moment. What's really bothering me right now is that YouTube is not telling us the whole story about COPPA. They admit they were sued. They paid a huge fine for transmission of web cookie information about kids younger than 13 years of old. They've told us that we need to mark our videos as either children's content or not children's content. Otherwise, we could face compliance issues. But YouTube doesn't tell us what compliance issue means. What the heck do they mean by compliance issues? Well, I've spent some serious time on this issue. I've read COPPA front to back, through and through. I've read the case law. Well, I can tell you that what compliance issue means is that if you make a video that somewhere out there the FTC or YouTube determines is a video that's primarily directed to kids younger than 13 years of age and you haven't marked it as such, then the FTC can sue you for $42,530, get depublication of your video, and perhaps have your account on YouTube entirely terminated. If you have multiple kid-directed videos on your account, and you haven't marked them as such, then you can be fined that $42,000 in change for each video that is a violation of the 2013 amendment and the FTC settlement with YouTube. And what's really disturbing is I'm told about the settlement YouTube contemplates that the FTC will perform periodic sweeps of YouTube and they'll identify creators that aren't marking their videos appropriately or have marked their videos the way they believed it was appropriately but the FTC or YouTube determined it was kids content and therefore the FTC can bring a lawsuit against those creators. Can you imagine if you were a creator and you made a video that was primarily directed at 15 year olds, but the FTC or YouTube disagreed and therefore they said this was kids content and therefore they are going to terminate your channel and they're going to sue you for many thousands of dollars. Can you imagine that? Are you gonna stay on the platform and continue to make videos? I think a better question is, are you gonna stay in America? In a lot of ways, I feel betrayed by YouTube. In this FTC settlement, they could have just taken a hit and come up with some better strategy to help kids creators continue to make money on the platform and also not sacrifice the personal information of kids younger than 13 years old. But I see with this settlement, they basically surrendered to the FTC. Yeah, go ahead and sweep YouTube and look for our creators and sue them. I'm also tempted to feel hopeless. 
but I'm not quite there yet. There is a way that you and I as creators can fight this. I'm gonna tell you about that method at the end of this video. But for now, I wanna focus on how I feel about this new child marking video system. Let me give you a hint, not good. I'm sure you've seen the video that YouTube put out and they say, listen, you need to mark your whole channel as either child videos or not child videos, or if you have both, you can mark each video in your catalog as either a child video or not a child video. How do creators know whether their video is a child video under the FTC rules or not? Well, YouTube does provide us with a handy dandy 10 factor analysis that us creators should do each time we wanna publish a video. Have you looked at the factors? They're right there in Title 16, Code of Federal Regulations, Section 312.2. I'm surprised you haven't seen them before. To determine whether or not your video is kid-directed, you, as the creator, must analyze, and I quote, the subject matter of the online service, the video's visual content, whether the video has animated characters or child-oriented tech activities, incentives, I don't know what that is. Music or audio in the video, age of the models in the video, presence of child celebrities or celebrities who appeal to children, language or other characteristics of the online service, and whether the advertising on the online service is directed at children. Wow, at the end of the video, YouTube says you should consult a lawyer about whether or not your video is kid directed or not. Listen, I'm a social media lawyer. I've read through these factors multiple times. They're written actually by administrative officials and not legislators, and I can't even tell what they mean, let alone give advice to creators about whether or not they factor in favor of kids' content or not kids' content. Going through these factors leads me to the undeniable conclusion that YouTube failed to tell us, they did not disclose that these 10 factors are unworkable on a day-to-day -day basis. I can think of dozens of examples of videos that have like kids themes, but were made for adults. I'm thinking of Emma Chamberlain and her collaboration with Jojo Siwa, Cody Ko's kids content, or what about the channel What's Inside, where dad Dan and his son Lincoln cut open stuff to see what's inside. Is it a kid's channel? Is it an adult channel? I watch it all the time and I'm an adult, but it has kid themes. Does What's Inside have to mark all their videos as children's content? If they don't, are they gonna be sued by the FTC? And I was just thinking about creators that have swearing in their videos, but they also have kids content. I mean, just take example of Cody Ko kids content video. He swears in the video, but I don't think that he intended that video for kids, but it has lots of kids themes. It has Nerf battles and lots of kids running around. Is that gonna be a video that's going to get Cody Ko in trouble with the FTC? YouTube failed to tell us that these factors are unworkable. And you know what that's gonna lead to? It's gonna lead to chaos. Creators are gonna be in the unfortunate position of not knowing how to properly categorize their content. Since the penalties for messing up how you label a video are so steep, $42,530, the loss of the video, the loss of the channel, these creators are gonna be stuck. Ultimately, I think that these creators are gonna be in this position where they're gonna err on the side of labeling their videos as kid-friendly videos just to avoid the bare possibility that the FTC or YouTube would come in and do that automatically. And that is a shame because creators of videos that are deemed kid-directed are going to lose so much. I haven't even told you what they're gonna lose. As you know, as of January 1st, 2020, YouTube is going to require that all videos uploaded to their platform are marked for kids or not. YouTube has also said that in the past month, they've undertaken a massive overhaul of the algorithm to be able to affect a seek and destroy mission for all kids content that is not properly marked. So even if you don't mark your videos, YouTube is gonna do it for you. Heaven help the creator that's now been assimilated as a kids creator. Here's how those kids creators are gonna be marginalized. First off, as of January 1st, 2020, no comments on kids videos. Now that's been the case for a while, but that's still a blow to creators. 
Guess what? No info cards, no end screens. Your channel's no longer gonna qualify for YouTube stories and you're not gonna have a community tab. Your subscribers are no longer gonna get notifications when they hit the bell and get the notifications. The audience is no longer gonna be able to save your video to a watch later or a playlist. And then comes the biggest blow to creators of kids content. YouTube is not telling us that as of January 1st, 2020, AdSense revenue for kids directed content is virtually gone. Let that sink in. You will no longer be able to make a living as a creator of kids content after January 1st, 2020. YouTube has told us explicitly that personalized ads will not appear on kids content after January 1st. They've been a little secretive about whether or not any ads will appear on kids content. My personal opinion is that some ads will continue to be on kids content, but they won't be targeted, they won't be personalized. So the CPM rates for those ads are gonna be low and creators making that kids content are not gonna earn a lot of money. So working hard, trying to entertain kids from around the world is not gonna be a viable job going forward in 2020. Kids creators, I hate to say it, but you're a dying breed. But this doesn't necessarily have to be the case. We as creators can rise up and fight against the consequences of this FTC settlement with YouTube. How do we do it? You can join me and other creators like Daryl Eves and Roberto Blake and Jeremy Johnson, and you can sign a petition written to the FTC requesting clarification and reconsideration of rules so that these draconian penalties that do exist and are going into effect on January 1st are not felt by creators on YouTube. The link to the online petition is in the description section of this video, and I encourage you to go to the website, sign the petition, and leave a comment. Tell the FCC what you think about these new rules that YouTube is imposing on creators. As I said, the link to the petition is in the description section below, and you can also access it by clicking right there. This issue with COPPA is too big for you to ignore. Sure, you may not be a kid's creator. However, over time, these laws are seeping in, so I encourage you to do something about it. Together, we can make a difference on this. We can change the law. All right, that's enough for today. We'll see you next time.